Good morning, everybody. In today's episode, we're going to learn how to consume an API in Python. So specifically, we're going to be building a cryptocurrency price checker app thing. Here I have my crypto.py file, and in this file, we're going to need requests. And this is something you might need to install. So from a terminal, all you will need to do is say pip3 install requests. If that doesn't work, you can try pip or python3 hyphen m pip. Basically, figure out how to use pip on your machine. To check if it's working, you can do hyphen hyphen version. And you know, if you get a proper response for python3 in this case, then you know that is how you would invoke that command. Now, before we get too deep into this, I wanted to share that this video is actually sponsored by a company known as Blazed Path. This is a low code solution that can make doing these kinds of things a whole lot easier. So here's a message from them. Blazed Path is a low code solution to build web applications with ease. Starting off with a simple application is easy and you can integrate with all the tools you need to deploy and scale to enterprise level applications. If you want to build microservices and deploy to the cloud 10 times faster than traditional development, Blazed Path is for you. Jump to the end of this video to see just how easy it is to use Blazed Path. Get started with Blazed Path with the link below. So thank you Blazed Path for sponsoring this video. There'll actually be a little feature about them later on in this video. But let's stick to the Python app for now and we'll talk about Blaze Path later on in this video. Now there's lots of different ways you could pull cryptocurrency prices. We're going to use a service known as CoinMarketCap. And even within CoinMarketCap, this API is fairly large. So there's a lot of different ways you can do this. But basically we're gonna sign up to get an API key. This is gonna be required and you're gonna include that in your request. So as a general rule, let me just make something clear. API keys are not something you're supposed to just hand out to anybody. However, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys my key so that it makes the video a little bit easier. I'm trusting you, don't go spend all my API credits. So we have that copied, we'll probably use that later on. Now let's check out the API documentation. And here's a simple Python implementation that they have right here. So you can use this. I ended up using a different route, which is okay, which is quotes under a cryptocurrency and then quotes latest, which will return the latest quote for one or more cryptocurrencies. So this is what the path is gonna look like, forward slash v1, forward slash cryptocurrency, forward slash quotes, forward slash latest. This has a lot of query parameters that you can pass along with your request to change the results. For example, you can pass in an ID, which is a comma separated cryptocurrency coin market cap ID, such as one or two. These are basically associated to different symbols. So BTC or ETH are going to have coin market cap IDs and you can use one or the other. In general, I think they recommend to use coin market cap IDs. It's better for long term, you know, if something changes, but it's probably not going to kill you if you use the symbol either if you're just building a simple app. So now I want to take a look at how to actually make a request to this API endpoint. So in our code, here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a variable URL and this is going to contain the base URL, and then we'll just plug in a few uh, of the other things. So it's going to be HTTPS colon slash slash slash. And the address, here's the full URL. So you can copy it, but that's then you have to go find your API key again. So I'll copy it and then I'll go find my API key. So I'm going to paste this web address here. And then here's an example of how to use the query parameters. You just use a question mark the name of the parameter and then set it equal to something. In authentication, it shows two different ways that you can use your API key. One is a custom header or one is through a parameter. So we'll start with this one. So we'll copy this and what it's gonna look like is you're just going to put question mark, paste that, so cmc underscore pro underscore API underscore key and then set that equal to your API key. So I'll go grab that again, copy that and then paste that there. And then to use requests, we just say requests.get and pass in the URL. And we'll assign this to a variable. We'll just call it response. And then let's go ahead and print the response just to see if we get anything. So when we run this, we get a response 400. So it appears to be working. How do we actually see the data though? Well, we just go up to response and say dot JSON. 
and that's going to give us the JSON response. All right, and it's working. It did give us an error. However, we got something, so we're on the right track. It's like when you debug for five hours and you get a different error and you're like, yes, progress. So we'll just need to pass in ID as well. So for that, instead of using the question mark, you only use that at the beginning. So instead we'll use an ampersand and sign and we'll just say ID is equal to one. And now when we run this, this is what we get. Lots of different stuff. So this is for Bitcoin, symbol BTC. If you want this to appear a little bit prettier, we can import pprint and use that for printing instead. So it's gonna be pprint dot pprint. And when we run that, you can see it spaces it out a lot easier to read, fantastic. And now that we have this JSON object, I want to talk about how to traverse it. So in Python, the JSON is immediately converted to a dictionary. So if we get the type of this, you can see it's of class dict. So any of the methods available on dictionaries, we can use on this dot JSON here, such as traversing it using dot get. So dot get, and well, I kind of deleted the, uh, the data so I can't see it too well. So let's just get that back for a second. And what we want to do is we want to go into data and then we want to go into one and then we want to grab the quote and then USD <laughs> and then maybe price. So to do this, we'll say dot get. And the very first thing we want to get is data and then dot get. Next thing is one, and that's a string there. And then dot get inside of this object, we want quote, quote. And then lastly, well not quite lastly, there's a lot here. So dot get USD, and then lastly dot, dot get price. I'll just zoom out just a tad. Okay. That's crazy, but that should work. Get has an optional additional argument you can pass in, which is what to return if there is nothing. So by default, it's none, which if you try to invoke get on none, it's going to throw an error. So instead you can return an empty dictionary. And in that situation, you're not gonna get an error thrown. So I'll show you what I mean here in a second. If we just run this, we get the price, which is nice. However, if I were to change this to something like data, well then we get an attribute error. None type object has no attribute get. So to fix this, you could put a comma and then curly braces here. And then basically do that for each one of these. Just go through here and add in these curly braces. So basically because the first one returns an empty dictionary, we can invoke dot get on that even though it's empty and then do the same thing down the line, which will basically prevent any errors Alternatively, you could just, you know, do a try accept. I'm just throwing out some options here. Now, a better way to structure this request is to use parameters and headers. So I'm gonna talk about how to do that now. So before we do request.get, I wanna split this URL up into a few different components. So basically we're going to have just the base URL and I'm going to end that quote there. Then I'm going to take all this stuff and convert it to parameters and headers. The parameters are going to include pretty much like the ID and any of the other things to alter how the functionality works. So this is going to be a dictionary. So we'll just say ID and we'll set that equal to one. And then for the headers, what we're gonna do, this is gonna look a little bit different. We need to say the content type to do that, we say accepts and then application forward slash JSON, not, not JSON, JSON. And then after that entry is where we put our API key. So we'll say comma. And then for the key itself, we'll just take this here. And then for the actual value is where we'll put our API key, which stops right here. So we'll take all of this and we'll set that here and we can just get rid of that and then inside of the request it's real simple we just say params and set that equal to our parameters and then headers and set that equal to our headers 
let's run this and it seems like we still get the same response let's go ahead and change this back to just data how we had it to make sure it's actually working and we get none so something's not working so I'll just do a simple print of response dot JSON and it says the API key is missing and with a little bit of searching I realized for when you're using the API key through the custom header you have to put this X hyphen so we'll just go in here and add the X hyphen and I think that'll do the trick now and it seems to be working so let's go back to what we had and just print the actual price of Bitcoin 56,000 which makes me wish I bought more Bitcoin back when I did videos when it was 5,000 but oh, can't go back so getting the latest quote can also take the symbol instead of the ID which I think is a little bit more convenient pretty sure coin market cap offers a function or a, an API endpoint map which will basically take a symbol and return the appropriate coin market cap ID but I kind of think it's just an unnecessary step unless you really want to build this out but you can find that in cryptocurrency forward slash map but I'm just going to skip that and I want to build this with the symbol so we'll just change our code a little bit so instead of having this ID we're going to have a symbol and we'll just try BTC and it might have to be capital let's try and then I think doing this will change the uh, ID here as well there we go yeah so the way I have it now is you know I'm just printing that final result but as you're building this out you might just want to print everything and then you know clean it up once you're finally done so yeah you need to put the actual symbol there so what I want to do now is basically take this system and convert it to a function that we can just pass in the symbol and it'll give us back the price. So let's try that. We'll say something like def get price and this will take a symbol and I'm just gonna indent everything here. So instead of BTC here, we're going to have the symbol and then instead of BTC here, we're going to have symbol. And obviously, if we're making a function, we don't want to actually print it. We just want to return. That might not be obvious. Sorry, I hate when people are like, obviously, you just have to do this really crazy thing. But that one doesn't seem too bad. So let's see if that works. Let's just go ahead and invoke get price and pass in BTC. And then we'll pass this whole thing to print. And there we go. That's the price of Bitcoin. Last thing you could do is you could get this from input. So to do that, I'll just show it to you down here and then we'll replace it. So we'll say input, give me a cryptocurrency ticker. And then we can assign that to a variable. So we'll just say response and then we can invoke get price with the response and then we'll print that like so. And we'll replace that old one give me a cryptocurrency ticker and you'll have to run this in the terminal so python3 crypto.py give me a cryptocurrency ticker something like eth and it'll give you the price you know just go through here do some cleaning up maybe don't do it in all caps like an obnoxious person and there you go you have a cryptocurrency price checker go ahead and build this out and you know maybe convert between cryptocurrencies or say how many you can buy with another cryptocurrency you know a lot of this kind of stuff we talked about in my python boot camp what but i think that's a fair introduction for youtube now if you want to see how you can do something similar using a tool like blaze path check out this video i wanted to take a moment to talk in more detail about our sponsor for this video blaze path we mentioned it near the beginning, but we've covered a lot since then, so I'll do a quick refresher and then go into some of the more interesting details about Blazed Path. Blazed Path is a low-code solution which allows developers or really any IT professionals to build enterprise-grade applications. If you want to follow best practices with software development by building applications that are distributed, 
use microservices and communicate through APIs, well, BlazePath can make this 10 times easier and faster by simplifying the entire process from beginning to end. You can start off for free, you know, test it out, build some small applications, but you have all that room to grow and scale your application in a consistent and low risk way. In other words, BlazePath was built with large scale applications in mind, but it of course will work well with small applications or if you're just learning and getting started, this can be a fantastic tool. Using BlazePath will be comfortable for many of you here because you work in a local environment and you synchronize with a Git repository. So you're going to have a similar development experience and all of the code that is generated from BlazePath is human readable and designed without having any vendor lock-in. You can easily just build an application with BlazePath and you can deploy it on their cloud or because all of the code is just normal code, you can take that code and deploy it anywhere you want. So you can just download the standard source code or get a Kubernetes package and deploy that on your own cloud or other cloud environments. The fact that this tool was designed with no vendor lock-in in mind sets this tool apart from a lot of other low-code solutions out there. So I was working with the BlazePath team to build out a UI for cryptocurrency prices, and turns out it's one of the simplest applications to consume an API and see the full potential of that API and all of the different endpoints. So whether you're building your own API or consuming an API that's already out there, this tool can work for you. It's also a great tool for designing applications. So whether it's application architecture or database schemas, you can go into BlazePath and start designing your application so you can have the exact architecture that you need. This is also a fantastic learning tool if you're learning about software architecture or database design. So whether you're a software developer or just an IT professional that wants to get some more experience in software development, this tool can work great for you. Using this tool, you can ultimately build an entire microservice-based application and follow best practices and standards for web development without having to know the ins and outs of hundreds of different tools and figuring out how everything pieces together. BlazePath will make that simple for you. So again, check out the link below and use the code Caleb Curry, and this will give you some additional cloud credits, which will come in handy if you want to continue building for free and build out your continuous integration pipelines. And I'll also leave a link for the cryptocurrency coin price checker if you just want to see a real world application built in BlazePath. So thank you BlazePath so much for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. So thank you again for watching this video and thank you to BlazePath for sponsoring this channel, making this kind of stuff possible. And um, I appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe. Stay tuned for the next video. Check out BlazePath link somewhere down below and I'll see you in the next video.